isotopic design of footing. Um, you should, uh, this course, um, I will talk a little bit about, about foundation because our course is concrete design, not foundation design. So you should have another course which called Soil Mechanics and Foundation with Dr. O next semester. I believe we'll cover uh, too much information and I encourage you to take as much as you can from this course. Soil Mechanics, very important for FE and PE exam. Soil Mechanics, you will learn too much information. Anyway, for foundation, we have two main kinds of foundation. The first one called shallow foundation, like footing, raft. The second type of foundation called deep foundation, like piles. So we have main two types, the two types of foundation shallow and deep foundation for shallow foundation we have footing we have four kinds of footing isolated footing combined footing strip footing strap footing uh, we have raft both of them called shell foundation and we have piles what you mean by footing the first kind of footing, which called isolated, every column has only one footing. So this footing is supporting only one column. This footing can be called isolated. So each column has a separate footing. This footing can be called isolated. We have reinforcement at the bottom in both direction, this direction and this direction at the bottom of the footing. We don't have reinforcement at the top for isolated footing. We don't have the only reinforcement mesh at the bottom for isolated footing. As you see, guys, the center line of the column at the center line of the footing. We recommend to do so. The center line of the column to be at the center line of the footing. Sometimes you have two very close columns for any reason. This column and this column are very close. So if you put this column on isolated footing and the other column on another isolated footing, the two footing probably will be overlapped or they are very, very, very close to each other. So we recommend to use another kind of footing which called combined footing. Only one footing supporting two columns. This footing can be called combined footing. Can you watch? We have only one footing supporting this column and this column. For this kind of footing, we have two reinforcement mesh, one at the bottom and one at the top. So the reinforcement mesh for combined footing, we will have one at the bottom in both direction and another one at the top of the footing. So make sure you can understand this point. For isolated footing, we have only one mesh at the bottom. For combined footing, we will have two mesh, one at the top, one at the bottom. We have another kind of footing which called strip. Guys, can you watch back? You have a column, this column can, rep can represent one concentrated load. 
this column can represent one concentrated load, one concentrated load. But if you have a wall, wall can be uh, uh, represented as line load. Your load is continuously distributed like this. So your footing at this moment can be called strip footing. Can you watch this wall? So the foundation will be strip footing. Sometimes your footing can be called strip. How can I do this? How can I do strip footing? I told you the center line of the column at the center line of the footing. Sometimes I cannot do this. Sometimes I cannot do this. The, the column at the edge of the footing. Can you do this right now? Everybody, can you do this? Stand on the chair you are sitting on. Try to stand at the edge of the chair. What should, what, what will happen? Uh, overturning? I believe the chair will be overturned. The same also will happen for footing. If the column at the edge of the footing, we can expect overturning for the footing. We have another footing, the column at the center line. So it's okay. If you connect between this footing, which would like to overturn, with this footing, which is okay, this beam and this system can be called strap footing. Strap footing. So strap footing only, only, only if you have a B, if you have a column at the edge of the footing. So you will connect this footing with another footing which the column at the center by a beam this beam and these two footing all of them can be called strap footing i have a question anybody can tell me what is the situation you have to put the column at the edge of the footing can you tell me Anybody? Can you can you imagine which situation I have to put the column at the edge of the footing? Any answer? Guys, any answer? Thinking. <laughs> Take your time, Oliver. Okay, I can tell you. Guys, um, I have a piece of land. This is for me, for Ayman. And we have another piece of land for my neighbor. For Burak. I decided to build my house. So my house will be at this corner. Adjacent to my neighbor. That makes sense. So I have a column at this location for my building. This column, I will support this column by a footing. I need to put a footing underneath this column. I believe I cannot do this. 
So what's the, the, the footing like this? Because at this moment, I went to my neighbor. I cannot do, I cannot put or do or construct any part of my house in the neighbor, the property. Because this line represent property line. You cannot do any thing. You can extend any part from your construction to the neighbor, the property. That ne that makes sense. So the only option to put your footing like this. So what happened right now? The column will be at the edge of the footing. So we can expect overturning because this load will apply a vertical force, very huge number, a very huge amount of force. So I have another column here inside my property. So I can put a footing like this. So the column at the center of the footing. So I'm going to do a beam to connect between this footing and this footing. At this moment, this beam and this footing can be called strap footing. That makes sense? This point is, is is clear enough. Okay. So it's very important to understand what is the difference. The difference between these types of footing isolated. You have one column, we have one footing. We have two columns very close for any reason. I don't care. Uh, we can combine them in one footing. We have a strip load. Uh, due to a uh, wall, brick wall, or a uh, concrete wall, whatever. So your footing will be strip. Strip only in uh, specific uh, uh, conditions, specific situations. Only if you have a column at the edge of the footing. Why at the edge? For many reasons. One of them, you have a neighbor and your column adjacent to the property line. The second type of shallow foundation called raft. Raft, we have only one huge footing supporting all the columns of the building. At this all call, all the columns of the building. At this moment, this footing can be called footing. It can be called raft, mat, foundation. Can you watch from this photo? We have two, two big layers of reinforcement. What at the, one at the top, at the bottom, and the second one at the top in both directions. This direction and this direction. So at this moment, this kind of foundation can be called raft, but you are still talking about shallow foundation. If your foundation is raft, shallow foundation. If your foundation is kind of uh, footing, you are talking about shallow foundation. The second type of foundation, which you call deep foundation. The most common type of deep foundation is piles. Piles. So what is the main reason behind piles? You have to understand this concept. I know all of this information should be covered in soil mechanics course. But anyway, guys, we have here is the ground surface. ground surface and we have some uh, soil investigation 
told us, and I will cover it soon, told us we have clay layer for uh, 20 feet. And after the clay layer, we have sand layer for another 30 feet. And we have rock layer. We cannot imagine how, how what is the depth of this rock layer. Anyway, uh, and we are constructing a bridge. And this bridge has here abutment. And the, the load coming from this bridge this layer of clay is very weak cannot support the load from this uh, beer or from this column also the sand layer cannot support the whole load it will support a little but cannot support the total load so how can i reach to the rock layer do I need to excavate all of these layers to reach to this rock? No, you can, you can do something very, very, very simple. Go ahead and construct vertical columns. Yeah, they are columns, vertical columns, but these columns are embedded in the ground until you reach the rock layer, which is very, 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 very uh, strong. And at the top, we will construct here a footing. This footing is supporting the column of the bridge. But we need to change some concept. This footing will not be called footing because footing, the normal footing should be supported by ground directly. But this footing is not supporting by ground, it's supported by another columns. So this footing will be called bile cab. And these columns will not be called columns, they will be called biles. And this kind of foundation called deep foundation because you are reaching a very deep layer of soil. So the load coming from the bridge to the column, then to the bile cap, the bile cap will distribute this load to this bile and this bile, and these biles will transfer the load to the very strong layer of soil. Can you watch? these photos we have here four biles embedded in the ground how can i construct these biles it's a different story not covered in this course we have many techniques based on what is the type of your bile then i'm gonna uh, cover these columns I'm sorry, this biles by a footing and to construct here one column because some of one of you will say, Hey, how can this column with a one reaction, how can this reaction will be distributed among these biles? Actually, guys, we should have a transfer system which called bile cap. So if you look here to this elevation, here is the column with one reaction, and we have here something called bile cap. This bile cap will transfer this load and distribute it over this bile and this bile. If you have this kind of foundation, this kind can be called deep foundation. When 
I will need to use the foundation if you have very weak uh, layer of soil. I cannot excavate all of these depths, so I will driven. I will drive. I'm sorry, or I will um, construct these piles until to reach the strong layer of soil. Any question? Do you have any question related to the types of foundation? Okay. We have something called bearing capacity. Sometimes the layer of soil is clay some, uh, 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 near the ground surface. Sometimes it's sand. Sometimes it's uh, probably silty sand. Sometimes it's a sandy gravel. We have different type of soils. And we need to construct footing on this soil. My question is, do you think this layer is strong like this one, like this one, like this one? No, we have different type of soil. That means we have different degree of uh, strengths. One of them will be weak. One of them will be very strong. One of them will be in between. So we need to determine something to figure this strength up, which called bearing capacity of soil. We have some guys, a few guys with this uh, technique to get some samples from the soil at different depth uh, based on the uh, experimental work in the lab on these samples. I can tell you what is the capacity of this soil. This capacity called bearing capacity. Also, it's not our topic. It's, uh, uh, it's outside the scope of this course, but just to learn that from the, ge uh, the geotechnical engineer can tell you based on some experimental work, can tell you what is the type of the soil and what is the capacity of this soil because this number or this capacity will be used in the design of foundation. So this table can give you roughly some numbers based on what is the type of material. If you have rock, 6,000 pound per square feet. Sandy gravel or gravel, 5,000. Sand, silty sand, or anything like, like this related to sand or gravel, 3,000. Clay, clay is the weakest soil. We don't like clay. If you have a clay, believe me, I believe that most of the foundation will be piles because we don't like clay. Clay only, on, only for agriculture. But clay for foundation or construction, we don't recommend this. Uh, so the building capacity is 2,000 only per square feet. So guys, until this moment, you learn it. What are the types of foundation? And we have a very important parameter which is called building capacity. Based on building capacity, I can figure out what is the size of foundation. The first type of foundation or the first element I'm gonna design strip footing. Strip 
footing. Can you watch to this building? This one is a column. Very simple column. We will support it by isolated footing. That's fine. This is a column. I'm going to support it by isolated footing. But this element is a wall. It's called shear wall. By the way, can you tell me what is the main purpose or what is the main function of a shear wall in a building? Why you? We bought this huge wall. Why we didn't do it like two columns, one here and another one there? That's it. Why you are doing this huge wall, concrete, reinforced concrete wall? Any answer? Do you know what is the main reason behind this wall? Thank you, Barack Oliver. To support more area, no. Because you can put a column at this edge and another column at this edge, and you can put beam in between or something like this. No. It's not supporting more area. It's supporting lateral load. If you have wind load, if you have earthquake, we should. A construct shear wall to resist these lateral load. I said should for low rise building, five stories, uh, six. But if you have 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 floors, no, we have two, but statical system to support these lateral load. The most typical. And the common system is shear wall. We have different, we have many other systems, but the most common and cheap system is shear walls. Very easy to construct, the cost is very low and uh, more effective. But if you have a high rise building, 50 floors or 100 floors. So no, we need to change this system to another system. Anyway, so this wall will be supported by strip footing. I cannot say this footing will be isolated. Isolated for a very simple column, but this one is continuously extended for a lens. So, uh, this footing will be called strip footing. Sometimes you have a fence around a big area, around your building, around uh, any other building. So this extended wall will be supported by strip footing. Anyway, we are talking right now about strip footing. So, we learned before any element will give you reactions. One of them can be called dead loot. And the other one can be called life loot. Do you remember designing of a slab, designing of beam, designing of anything? We have loading coming from dead load. And we have loading coming from life load. So we can expect reactions, one from dead load and one from life load. Actually, if you are designing foundation, we need two cases. The first one, you have to add dead load plus life load without factors. And one more time, you add dead load plus life load with factor 1.2 dead plus 1.6 life to get the ultimate load. We will 
you this value in a few cases and we will use this value in a different situations so during the problem or during the uh, designing of a footing i will tell you hey the reaction on the footing did load equal a value life load equal another value so what should i do you need to do both of them add did load and the life load without factors add did load and the life load after you apply the factors guys i told you this hint or this comment last time and i would like to repeat it do you think the load on the foundation coming from one floor two floor three floor it should be coming from one floor time the number of floors so when you are solving a beam and you can figure out you have a beam in one floor and this beam is supported here by a column and from structure analysis you can figure out the reaction from this beam which is in one floor do you think this reaction will be used to design foundation no this reaction must be multiplied by number of floors because if you are talking about this beam so this beam is only in this floor and this reaction is coming from this floor only but we have one two three four and the five floors so we have to multiply this reaction by this number of floors any question so far Okay. First step, dead plus life without factor. Second step, dead plus life with factors. Third step. Guys, I told you we have something called bearing capacity. You allowable. Will be given by geotechnical engineer after doing some experimental work on the soil samples so finally he will give me a report this report will include the value of allowable bearing capacity just to remind you when you are trying to construct footing I'm gonna do excavation to bore the footing then the column then I'm gonna apply fill put or return the soil filling that makes sense that makes sense so if you are looking for what is the pressure on the soil i can expect something coming from the column something co coming from the weight on weight of the footing and there's something coming from the own weight of the soil on the footing. Do you agree? Do you agree? All of these load will cause stress on soil. So, I'm gonna use Q allowable. No, we will use something called Q net. 
equal q allowable minus gamma concrete h footing minus gamma h i'm sorry gamma soil h soil which h soil this h h footing this h this footing made from concrete to so this gamma will be 150. this material from soil this is the gamma of soil so the weight of the soil was subtracted the weight of the foot the footing was subtracted from the allowable soil so the remaining q net only to support the load from the column so the bearing capacity allowable bearing capacity must be subtracted by gamma soil h soil minus gamma concrete h footing H footing is the thickness of footing. These terms for soil. Once you did this cal these calculations and figured out the Q net, this Q net. I will divide the applied load from the footing, I'm sorry, from the wall by Q net, so I can figure out the area of footing. Area of footing. Guys, remember which value of load, we have two values. One is surface and one is ultimate. One without factor and one with factor. Which one I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use that one without factor. B, which equal dead load plus life load without any factors. Okay? Once you can figure out the area required for the footing, I can convert this area by width and lens for the footing. Let me stop here. That's enough for today.